Mark Twain once said, when I was younger, I could remember anything, whether it happened or not. My father told me, memories are all we are, moments, feelings captured on threads of reason. He'd say, take a man's memory and you clean the slate. Chip away at his memory and he'll slowly die. At first, it was the simple things, keys, wallet, and then it was where did he park the car? Then it was names, faces, even his own address. My biggest fear for my dad wasn't him forgetting me. It was him forgetting what he loved so much. This is the story of my father. Hi, can I help you? Do you have a reservation? Preston Walker, I have a reservation. 203 Roosevelt Boulevard, Philadelphia, PA. Okay, Mr. Walker, we have you right here. All right, can I get your credit card and photo ID? All right, well, welcome, Mr. Walker. Would you like a king or two queens? I already have a reservation. All right, gotcha. gotcha. All right, how about a king? Third floor. The elevator is around the corner. The pool and sitting area are down this hall this way. Breakfast is served from six to nine every morning. Okay, oh, okay. slow down. And um, breakfast, 6 to 9 a.m.? Yes, sir. And anything else? Oh, uh, yeah. We do have a complimentary happy hour from 5 to 7 every night. Yours truly is the bartender. Thank you. Thank you.
Yes. Yes. Thank you. Dear Lord, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sin and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Once saved, always saved. Dad, it, it's Madison. Um, I just got to your house and a little worried about where you are. Please give me a call as soon as you get this. I love you.
Dad. Pick up. Just pick up. Pick, pick up.
Can I help you? I'm good. Where's Ben? Oh, he's in his room. Do you hear anything about your dad? Nothing. I'm thinking about calling the police. I mean, I, I just talked to him yesterday and he was fine. And today, nothing? What if he lost his phone? Honey, I'm sure he's fine. If I don't hear from him tomorrow, I'm calling the police. I'm serious. Yeah, I just left the police station. All they said was they're gonna issue some kind of alert, some red, so I don't, I don't know. No, that's it. Yeah, I've been all over town. Yes. No, I've been there too, I can't find him. I'm starting to get really worried. Preston. How's your day going? Fine. Well, you know it is happy hour. You want some wine, some beer? Um, how about some orange juice? Okay, no problem. Thank you. No problem. So, are you here to visit a loved one in the hospital? <laughs> My daughter Emma was in an accident. She's fine, but she might have surgery tomorrow. 
I came in yesterday. I'm from Kansas City. I'm from Philadelphia. Here for work? Um, no, I, I used to work, live here. Hmm. It's a beautiful town. My husband and I used to come here for Christmas. Some great memories. Something about small towns. Yeah. Something about a small town. So, I guess you're visiting some family member? No. No. I... I just wanted to come home. No, sir. There's no way that y'all can be that busy. No. No, we, we come down here every single week. We make the same trip to your hospital. Every single week you tell me the same thing. No, there's no way, man. Like, my daughter needs the surgery. How? No. Sir, every single week it's the same thing. We make the same trip every week to be told the same thing. I go to your nurse. <laughs> Enjoy me. Good morning. Same to you. Be a beautiful day. What are you going to do today? I'm visiting. I'm going to go visit my daughter. See if her. For what? I. I thought I told you last time. She was in an accident. She's in the hospital. Yes. Yes. Of course. Are you okay? Yes. Yes. I, I, I'm just going to go upstairs. Are you okay? Yes. I, I'm just going to go up and finish my breakfast in my room. Thing. Oh, daughter, the daughter. In, in hospital.
Nuts. Three duties. Hey there. Hello. You know, the track, the field, and this press box is closed during school hours. I'm sorry. I know. I I'm sorry. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't have come. I, I should have just stayed back hey, in the hey, hotel. It's all right. Don't worry about it. I'm Coach Roberts. I'm the head coach of the football team. <laughs> um... I played football here. You did? Really? Wow. You mind me asking what year? A while ago. Um, but when I was here, n none of this was here. I mean, the field, the, f the field was like exactly right there, but it wasn't this field. You're right. You know, this track is 10 years old. And we put these stands in here about 15 years ago. But it is the same field. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I don't remember a lot. But I do remember my senior year. We had a great home victory. And right after the game was over, a bolt of lightning shot down out of the sky and hit a tree right behind the scoreboard. Over there? Yeah. My, my dad said, <laughs> that was God applauding our victory. God applauded. That's some fan. Yes, he is. So, how are things going with the team now? Well, could be better. We're still playing with antiquated equipment. We need new uniforms. They put us in a new division, and it's kind of tough. Been really tough on my guys. With COVID and the cutbacks, I don't know if I'm the head coach or the head of maintenance sometimes. Mm. You know, you should ask him to be a fan. Who? God. God will hear me. If you ask him, he will show up.
was just about to practice my sermon for Sunday. You're more than welcome to stay. So you're the preacher. My mom used to sing in the choir here. And when I was a kid, I used to sit here with her. You know, years ago, there was a, another preacher here, and he had hair kind of like mine, <laughs> balding on top, really silver hair, and he always wore a bow tie. My father. My father was here for almost 54 years. He started the church. He's in heaven now. Once saved, always saved. I'm sorry? Once saved, always saved, right? Yeah. Confession, believing, being a disciple of Christ. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Barbara. Hello. I'm Preston. Preston Walker. Okay. You took a picture of me this morning. Do you remember that? I don't. Well, it's very nice to meet you. You said you're from around here, right? Yes. And you, you're visiting your daughter in the hospital. That's right. And how is she? Are you married, Preston? Oh, no. My Sylvia passed away a while ago. Oh, I'm sorry. I just can't bring myself to take it off. Do you have any children? Daughter. What's her name? It's okay. I bet you have a picture of her on your phone, if you want to show me. That's her. Mm. And that's my house. That's my car. <laughs> that's my pastor. He's a really good man. Mm. Why don't you and I take a picture together? Ready? Cheese. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. Oh, good, good. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. No, I, I know I'm not, I'm not on the account. No, but he's my dad. Can you at least give me his last couple charges? Well, fine. You file your report then. Are you a writer? 
No. An artist? No. What do you do with those notebooks? Are you leaving? Yeah, just for a little bit. So, you'll be back? Next week. Next week? Hmm. I'm Amber. This is my dad. Nice to meet you, Amber. Take care. You know? Do I? How you feeling? I'm wonderful today. So you know about her tumor? No. Amazing young lady. I've been studying her case for months now. Oh, so you're a student? Second year pre-med. Congratulations. Thanks. So tell me about the tumor situation. All right. So her doc in Louisville? Louisville, Kentucky. They come back and forth between Louisville? Back and forth, yeah. So what, what exactly is wrong with her? So basically, she has this tumor that's been growing. It's been growing and growing and growing. And there's only one doctor, Dr. Klein, who's across the street that can help her. So why isn't he helping? So why are they leaving? They come in here every week, hoping that the radiation will work. They go across the street, hoping that he'll change his mind, get on board. Anyway, you coming to happy hour? What? Orange juice? <laughs> Straight. Yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> As my Lord and Savior. Once saved, always saved. Preston? Hello. Your door was open. It's Barbara. Uh, who are you? Uh, we're friends. Uh, I'm on your phone. We took a picture. I just wanted to see if you'd like to go to lunch today. Oh. Barbara. Yeah, um, lunch? Um, sure. Okay, I'll wait outside for you. Okay, thank you. Shall we? Yeah. take a, a large, I'm kind of hungry, so we'll take a large and toppings, anything you don't like? Anchovies. <laughs> okay, how about my combo of peppers and mushrooms? Sounds good. Okay, large peppers and mushrooms. Great. Great. Excellent, thank you. You know, Barb, when I was growing up here, this place used to be an auto parts store. Oh, really? <laughs> That's funny. You remember that, huh? So, Barbara, let me explain. After 
after my wife passed away, I, um, I had a stroke. Oh no. And my brain, it, it seized up for 15 seconds. And that 15 seconds caused something called enterograde amnesia. Alzheimer's? Short-term memory loss? Yes. How's the long-term? Mostly intact. So is that why you're here? To go to the hospital by the hotel? Oh, no, that was just by chance. I don't believe in chances. It must be frightening. I mean, you cover it well. I guess not a lot of people know. That's one of the problems. I don't sometimes remember who knows and who doesn't. That's why I take a lot of pictures and take so many notes. I'm trying to retrain the short-term memory. So you're reliving the long-term in order to recall the short term. Something like that. There's some things I just don't want to forget. Like family. Your daughter. Some days are better than others. Today, Today's a pretty good day. You didn't answer the question. I forgot. Oh. <laughs> Please don't. Today, today is a really good day. Here's your pizza, guys. Ooh. Um, ooh. Looks, looks good. good. Yeah, really. <laughs> Got some plates in there before you. Is there anything else you need for you? No, that would be it. Thank you. You know, after lunch, could you show me around town? Or show me your life. I'd love to. Hey, Coach. Come on in. Who's this? This is Barbara. Hi. Hi, Coach. Coach Roberts, nice to meet you. So, congratulations on the win. Oh, oh, well, thank you. But you were there? <laughs> what? How? <laughs> what? Recognize anyone up there? <laughs> That's me. This is our senior picture. Oh, fun. <laughs> have something else for you, too. Oh, Bob? <laughs> I'll miss Greg. Coach. Welcome home. <laughs> Um, Coach, mind if I uh, take Barbara down and show her the field? Absolutely. Be my guest. Before I start crying in front of you? <laughs> hey, number 23. Still got it, Coach. <laughs> Housekeeping.
come to room 330. You're not going to believe this. Hi there, I'm sorry for bothering you. My friend grew up in this house and it would be great if you could look around it. Sure, come on in. Thanks so much. He's been driving by here like every day. He's harmless. It just means a lot to him to look around. It probably doesn't look the same. We've done renovations, added a back room. That's okay. We won't take much of your time. This wasn't here. And the, the stove was right here. And there was a window right there. My brother used to play baseball right outside there. He must have broken that window a hundred times. <laughs> Um, should I go downstairs? It's unfinished. I know. Is it your husband box? He used to. All these memories. Take a million notebooks to write down all of the wonderful memories I had in this house. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if you don't mind me asking, when did your husband pass? It was about a year ago. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm fine. Let me talk to you one second. My mom raised three of us in this house. And my, my don't get me wrong, my, my dad was there. And he was a good father. But it was all about mom. And then just like that, in no time at all, that little one in there, you are going to be everything to him. What do you want me to do? Call her. It is a beautiful church. My mom used to sing in the choir, and I would sit right here with her, fall asleep in her lap half the time. <laughs> Is this where you first met Jesus? I'm a Christian. <laughs> I was 14 years old, church camp, and we watched a movie. It scared me half to death. But I will never forget that experience. It was here. It, it was right there. The preacher asked 
if there was anyone that needed to accept Jesus. And I knew he was talking right to me. So my mom walked me down, and it happened right there. Preston, why do you pray for Jesus to save you again? I heard you at the hotel. Um, I can forget everything else in the world. Hello? Where is he? <laughs> West Virginia. I should have known. Is he okay? Okay, I'll be there tonight, but please, don't tell him I'm coming. No, you did the right thing. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I'm so sorry. With COVID, they're only allowing family members to go visit. I'm really disappointed. I wanted you to meet Emma. Um, I would like to go see her. I can take you back to the hotel first, then? No, no, no. Not at all. Take your time. You sure? Yes. Okay. I won't be long. Take your time. Okay. Code blue. Room 305. Dr. Klein, Dr. Klein, Dr. Klein, Dr. Klein, Dr. Klein, Dr. Dr. Klein, 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 Who are you? It's okay. I'm a doctor here at the hospital. Can you tell me your name? Are you under any medications? And you want me to look in the snowpot? You've been diagnosed with anterograde amnesia? Yes. Sir, when I looked at you out there, your retinal vessels were inflamed. That shows a negative. It says there's a problem with the blood getting to your brain, but I look at you just now and you're steady and clear. And apparently with no medications. Tell me about these notebooks. They, uh, they help me remember. Okay. Can you tell me your name now? Preston Walker. Good. Preston, do you know why you're here? My 
my friend Barbara is visiting her daughter and 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 you're Dr. Klein. You need to do surgery on young Amber. Is Barbara here now? Yes, visiting her daughter. What's her last name? Starkey. Good. Excuse me. I'll be right back. Betty. Dr. Klein? I have a gentleman at five that says he was here with a Barbara Starkey. Do we have a Starkey as a patient? Barbara Starkey. Hang on. That sounds familiar. Okay, is, is Barbara here? Well, I know what she looks like. Hold on. Can I have her daughter's records? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There they are. Okay. There you go. I'm sorry about your daughter. Are you one of her doctors? No, ma'am. They said she could go home in a couple days. Will you come with me, please? Preston, what happened? Are you okay? Are you okay? What about your daughter? She's fine. Barbara. Your daughter came into the ER with a punctured lungs. She suffered in a car accident. She died on the operating table. But you know that. It's okay. The limbic part of the brain is where we store emotions and memories, but it's also where the good Lord allows us to process grief. Now, for many people, this experience of loss becomes a transition. But for some, it doesn't. When you're trapped in this chronic grief, it can be early symptoms of future memory loss, and it can adversely affect the ability to remember our loved one. I want to run a few more tests and evaluate, but I don't want you to be overly alarmed. Okay. Now, Mr. Walker, I am chief of neurology here at the hospital, and this notebook idea I've only heard of these types of MCI enhancements. Practical applications. Spit it out, doctor. It seems that your cognitive impairment improves when you review these notebooks. Now, I predict that your, your cerebral, your memory, your critical thinking will increase as well. That's almost unheard of on a man with your diagnosis. Remarkable, even. I, I need to run a few more tests completely on the house. This could be a breakthrough study. We can do that. But first, you have to schedule surgery. For Amber? Yes. Hey, you two go. <laughs> Thanks, Jenny. I have something for you.
start on a blank page from here. So, tell me about it. Emma was born on April 24th. Why would you ever just leave? Why? Madison. This is Barbara. Nice to meet you. Madison. Nice to meet you. Dad, what are you doing? You can't just be checking into hotels and going to bars. You are a sick man. Madison, it's okay. I didn't forget. I just had to do this. I'm gonna call it a night. Okay. But wait, wait. We'll, uh, continue this later. Dad, where? Look, honey, you explain. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know what to say. You have no idea what... You, you don't have to say anything. Look, I am just glad I could help. You know what you do? You take care of that little girl of yours. That's all the thanks I need. Thank you. What is going on? Well, your dad is making a difference. He can't remember what he did yesterday, an hour ago. How is that possible? Madison. Madison. I have something for you. What is this? It's your notebook. <laughs> oh, Dad, I... I don't know. Madison, I, I know that you're angry and mad and probably sad for me, but I'm not. I, no longer. This is filled with wonderful, happy thoughts and stories and memories. And all the bad things? I just forgot about them. Madison, I need you to promise me two things. First, paint your life with brightness and colors and warm, glowing memories. And second, don't dwell on the past. That darkness can envelop you into pitch darkness. All we really have is time. Use your time for today. Don't worry about the past. Use it to make wonderful memories for the future. I promise. I finally got it. I could see my dad was happy. And that happiness was his memory. Then my dad surprised me once again. Yes. He got remarried. More new memories, more warmth, more love. Dad died 10 years later to the date of the wedding. 10 years exactly. Each year, we celebrate with him. A lot of people view this condition as a dark cloud and focus on what is missing. But there is so much still there. My dad is proof that it is not the end. It's the beginning of another journey. My dad knew his body was slowly decaying, but keeping a record was a wonderful way to not forget his inner nature, but it's in the learning from those pages, from the notebooks, that we find a new life. It made sense. He went home. He went home to remember. <laughs>